Welcome back to At The Table and a very happy new year to you. I hope that your year is filled with happiness in between those challenging moments that life inevitably throws our way. I mean, so long as you're not one of God's strongest warriors, you should be good. But seriously, most of all, I hope you realize the goals that you set for yourself, which is the point of today's podcast. It's a brand new year and many of us are identifying goals and mapping out how we want the year to unfold. But as you know, it doesn't always happen the way that we want. Life gets hectic and our ability to stick to goals decreases. But what if your well-being and quality of life and happiness all rested on achieving just one goal? Well, that was the case for today's guest, Osman Carroll, co-owner of DTX Performance Gym and applied sports psychologist. Now, he's a lifelong athlete, super fit, so no one would know that he struggled deeply with alcohol addiction that impacted his health and nearly cost this guy his family. He discusses how he overcame addiction and what we might learn to stick to achieving our goals this year. This is part podcast, part storytelling, part breaking bread, this is at the table. You've struggled a little bit with alcoholism, correct? A lot of bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of bit. Well, uh, back yeah, back back when I was struggling. Um, so yeah, I think uh, in my mid twenties to mm-hmm. to early thirties, and then even as re- recent as well, like sober this time, about two and a half years. Congrats, almost. man. Mm-hmm. So it, it's like kind of mixed feelings about. I appreciate it. I do. But like it's so with like with addiction, man, it's it's so crazy. Like your your focus has to be different. You can't look too far ahead, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And then even like when you look back, it's like you don't want to spend too much time looking back. Like you have to spend a lot of time just kind of being present. They say one day at a time, right? And that that's like truly, man. Like <laughs> the best thing you can do is just focus on where you are, like right now, mm-hmm. um, because I even like right now, like I I had been sober before. Uh, for like five years straight and so to fall after that it's like, oh my well that gosh. was covid then right but two three two and a half years ago it was, was it, COVID? Was, it was but I, i'm like i'm reluctant like i don't hey everyone gets a free pass no, between no, 19, no. <laughs> in 2020 and 2022 no, no one's judging nobody no. was their best self <laughs> yeah i mean and so but no i mean yeah the timing of it like when i look back like yeah that was that was right at the beginning but um, at the same time, I feel like I just got too comfortable. Like, uh, Can we explore this for a little bit? Yeah, Would you mind? Yeah, All right. Yeah, for sure. Um, was it a goal of yours to not drink? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is August now of uh-huh. 2020. Walk me through what that was like. Because the reason why I thought this was really interesting is that I feel like maybe there are some synergies between addiction and goal setting and that you have to be really focused on it. You've almost got to be, it's got to be at the forefront of your mind. So that way you don't go back and do behaviors that maybe you've been conditioning yourself to do. Yeah. So how do you stay focused through that and struggling too with the disappointment of, you know what, just five years ago I was fine or just, just last week I was fine. Yeah. And yeah. now here I am feeling like I'm back at square one. And I feel like that's a that's a very familiar place mm-hmm. for people at the top of the year. I'm I'm married now. Christina, like since we met, hadn't known me to drink. You know what I mean? And so at first, like she didn't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. And then I had to had to tell her what's going on. And then like kind of getting to that point, um, August, where it's like I need to like I, I told her straight up, like I told her one night after I had, you know, stumbled again, I was like, I can't, I need help. The next day, like I'm going into into rehab. The shame, what we learned, well, part of it is partly what keeps you in that addiction mm-hmm. cycle. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, mm-hmm. like you feel the shame, regret, and the and shame of what? Can you unpack? The that? Sh- well, the shame of like and not being present and being a better father, like what I've always, you know, wanted to be. And so I have to constantly remind myself. It 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 is a learning lesson. It's a hard one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I did get better from it. You know, I was able to learn a lot more about myself this time um, in rehab. I, I never I never went into inpatient rehab. I did outpatient the time before. This time I went to inpatient and I was in for 30 days. And um, so one of the most powerful things there was always to listen to someone else's story and just kind of empathize <laughs> with, with what they've 
been through and and things that they've lost in their life breaking out of that shame is like you have to kind of focus on how do i how do i become better now like what am i going to learn from this we can all identify with the disappointment of not achieving our goals but shame y'all is a little bit different Shame is what we experience when we believe that we are flawed or unworthy. It is deep and painful, and it's often accompanied by self-blame. Disappointment, on the other hand, is a feeling of sadness or frustration that we experience when something specific that we were hoping for or expecting does not happen. So shame relates to our sense of self, and disappointment is tied to a particular outcome. So why is this distinction important? When we lean into shame for not achieving a goal, we're less likely to continue pursuing it because it can cause us to withdraw so not to suffer humiliation again. Shame can make us feel unworthy of the success we're trying to achieve, causing us to doubt our own dopeness so we don't take risk and try things because we see ourselves as incapable. Even more, shame can isolate and disconnect us from others, which makes it harder to seek help whenever we need it. I was working with this client that struggled with their weight. They would get so down about cheating on their diet that they soon convinced themselves that trying to change their eating habits didn't really matter and they were, in their words, a loser. Even more, they tried to hide it from me. And after a bit more probing, they revealed to me that they just flat out didn't like themselves, so these feelings of shame were just compounding. Seeking professional help or talking with a trusted loved one or friend can help break the shame cycle, but researcher and renowned psychologist Brene Brown encourages us to embrace it as a part of the human experience. She says that shame derives its power from being unspeakable. What a powerful statement. This is explained in her shame resilience theory. It's a framework for coping with and recovering from shame. Now, there are four key factors that can help people develop resilience to shame. Number one, you gotta recognize and acknowledge when shame arises. This involves identifying our own feelings of shame rather than trying to suppress them. Number two, practice critical awareness. This means examining the messages and beliefs that contribute to our shame. Then look for more accurate and helpful ways of thinking about ourselves and our experiences. Number three, seek support and connection. Basically reaching out to others and building a network of people who can offer us empathy, understanding and validation when we are feeling vulnerable. Now this is exactly what Osman expressed he learned in rehab by listening to the stories of others. And number four, gotta speak that shame. This means finding ways to talk about our experience of shame with others in a way that helps us process and heal from them. So don't hide, we gotta embrace and express it. She says that by developing these skills and strategies, we can become more resilient to the effects of shame and better cope with life setbacks. So this has major implications for us achieving our goals this year. When you say shame, though, I feel like shame is such a powerful word. Did you forgive yourself for making a mistake? Yeah, but it, it doesn't feel that that simple, right? You know what I mean? Like, I can't, like, to me, like, I wouldn't just tell Christina, hey, I'm human. Like, I'm, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like, I have to, like, you have to kind of own this, man. And it's like, I, I saw the, everything that I put her through, like, the stress that it brought to her life and, and how how she, you know, she was hurt, man. It was hard. And I was like, I didn't know if she was going to be around when I got out, you know, if, if we we're still going to work mm -hmm. through this thing. I was like, man, this is my, and I had to wrap my mind around that as well. It's like, I don't, I could have just mm -hmm. ruined my marriage. Like, Cause I get that as men too. We want to take responsibility for our, for our actions, yeah. especially whenever you have a family, you want to be like, you know what? I own this. I did this and I need to man up for it. There's also this idea though, that like you're still human. Mm. You're still a person. You're going to make mistakes. Is there any danger in not allowing yourself to actually go through that and just to say, acknowledge the fact that, you know what, I'm not perfect. That does not excuse my actions, but I need to give myself this grace. Like you feel regret for a reason, like acknowledge it and then like move away from it. Like, like it's, it's something to learn from, right? It's a tool that teaches us, Hey, you know, you don't, you don't want that to be a part of your life. Um, and it's not anymore too you know what i mean like recognize where you are how far you've come from even if it's just been a day for those out there that, that 
need help. I mean, I, I highly recommend it. Like inpatient rehab is probably the, it's the best experience that I've had. Probably the, the smartest thing I've ever done. You can, you can have those first victories, those short-term victories in a controlled environment. You know what I mean? So it kind of like gets you on on the right path and get and if you can just kind of be a student and and learn as much as possible uh, through the process, then it, it really sets you up for. Mm-hmm for a better life, I think. Right. Okay, so there is some research that suggests that experiencing regret can have a negative effect on one's health, mainly mental health, but nothing conclusive about how it affects one's physical health. But the constant agonizing and worrying over a past choice causes stress, which has been associated with heart disease, higher blood pressure, and even immune system dysfunction. A study published in June 2022 by Rosh and Judah Hexhausen, I'm gonna be butchered by the internet, but it's a psychologist over at UC Irvine. They reported that the way that we think about regret can significantly impact our emotional well being, and the healthiest approach varies with age. So they administered these questionnaires on regret and mental health to about 122 adults, ranging in age from 20 to 87. Now, younger participants who scored high on mental health measures tended to blame themselves for the regret since they assumed they had control of the situation. Now, this tracks since when when we're young, we think we have time to repair what we've done and regret is merely a motivating factor. In contrast, older adults who scored high were more likely to give themselves a break. (laughs) With little or no ability to take action to repair the regret they experienced, they simply adapted by altering their perception of the regret and no longer shouldered the blame. They saw themselves as having a human experience rather than being the villain in their own stories. So there was less self-loathing, a lot more grace. (laughs) That's just so dope. (laughs) But don't discount regret as a motivator. There are several other studies that show how regret has led to life-changing actions, and as a result, those individuals were less likely to report symptoms of anxiety or depression, despondency, or worthlessness. And this is at any age, so it's how we deal with and internalize regret that makes all the difference. It's, it's important to find community, man, and let those relationships allow them to go a little bit deeper. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then like by sharing goals or, or mm-hmm. troubles or struggles, you know, it's a it's a great place to do it. But like, yeah, I still keep in contact. Like there's a group of guys on a on a group text that we still talk like almost mm-hmm. uh, at, at least weekly. You know what yeah. I mean? And just like checking in on each other. And it's not always but sometimes it's just about. You know, yeah. yeah. And these like these guys are from all over the country, man. And, and so uh, I think it's, it's just a beautiful thing. And so it feels like they're just their friends for life. You know, right. we haven't seen each other since then yet. But we, we plan on still like having some trips and, and things like that. But um, so far, man, like the group is doing well mm-hmm. um, and, it, and it helps you to kind of like it's it's then it becomes more than just about you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you, you want to be better for for your friends in, in this community. Um and so I think I think yeah it's it's mm-hmm. it's just like community is just a strong 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 tool uh, that can help anybody. You also said that you yourself had to kind of snap yourself out of it and remind yourself it's about celebrating the in between progress on your way yeah. to where you finally want to be. I had to be sure that that regardless, like when I when I leave here, I'm gonna be better. Mm-hmm. Uh, just for myself, like yeah. I just um, for myself, and then for my my kids, and and even like with with for Christina too. I mean, because she's involved, you know what I mean. Like we have yeah. we have kids at this point, and so uh, I had to make sure that again I can't rely solely on on someone else for 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 me being complete. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, I found myself I journaling like every morning I would get up and I'd write through these different prayer steps, uh, mm-hmm. what I'm, you know, I'm grateful for, for, for the day and what my prayers are for the day. And, and what, um, it was, it was helpful. It was just a helpful tool. It just kind of get me in the right state of mind. What else did you do during this time? 
Um, during that time, I worked out every day. They had a they had a gym there, and you know, not everybody did. But what I did notice is that the gym got more busy. Like the more I say, like because you know, people would see like, oh man, he's working out before we go to a group, and then hey man, what time are you getting up? Like I want to go in there with you. And so it was yeah. like, yeah, then like people were in there working out, and it just helped us to to feel better, man. And like I told you, like even before mm-hmm. rehab, like training has always been uh, my way of just kind of. It's, it's like therapeutic, right? It's yeah. just my way to, to kind of feel good and uh, getting get to the right headspace. That That's still, like to this day, it's like mm-hmm. I can I can lean on training and working out mm-hmm. for, for just how I feel, man, on a daily basis. Now, it may not seem like it's correlated, but Osman's decision to continue exercising while he was in rehab likely helped him in overcoming addiction. There are countless studies showing how exercise can help reduce substance and alcohol abuse and improve one's mood. But what does this mean for regular goal setting like making a career change or starting a business? Well, the principles are still the same. Exercise serves as an outlet for stress, which can be a common reason we don't stick to our goals because we're so stressed. In addition, it can build self-esteem and give a sense of accomplishment, especially when we aren't exactly where we want to be. So it gives us confidence. And maybe one overlooked consequence of exercise is that exercise can tire us out and it improves our sleep quality, which helps us wake up refreshed each day to tackle life's challenges. So improving our health and overall well-being. Lastly, Exercise forces us to better manage our time, which I know we all say we have none of, but it requires discipline and planning, and those skills can be applied to other areas of our life. So when in doubt, do a burpee, or just grab your walking shoes and take a walk around the block, because I'm not doing burpees right now. I think Justin said this on one of our earlier podcasts. We had one about performance. Mm -hmm. And we're asking him just because I think it was like, what was it? 0.8% of high school athletes make it to the NFL. And he said at one point, you've got to be obsessed about making it and about going after your goals. Can we talk a little bit about obsession (laughs) and goals? Um, Is that a good thing? I think that maybe that's a tough one because that's that's different for every person. It depends on the goal as well. Um, But yeah, if you want to be a professional athlete, it almost like requires that kind of sacrifice for you Mm -hmm. to take yourself. Like everything has to be about getting better at this sport, at this whatever position. You know what I mean? So then the more challenging the goal then... Mm -hmm. It it requires a new level of of dedication to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But any goal... Let's just say, like you know, like off jump. We're not gonna. We're not talking about any any easy goal. It's not like me. Yeah. You know what? I've got a goal today to go wash the dishes. That's an easy goal. That doesn't yeah. require anything of me. A harder goal would be like I'm gonna swim in the ocean because mm-hmm. you know I'm terrified of that. Yeah. Still, yeah, yeah. Right. So that's a really big thing for me, and I've got to. But I've got to do some things in the in between in order to to work myself up. You know, like to do that. Right. Yeah. I got to be somewhat obsessed about like, hey. I got to go and do this. I need to be training in larger pools and deeper pools. I need to be understanding how to do, do different strokes and whatnot. Like, so we're not talking about easy goals here. Isn't almost any goal. Is it, does it require a little bit of, of just obsession? I feel like when I think about harder goals that maybe I've achieved, it's more so like the, um, what you're willing to sacrifice too, though. That's kind of what I think about. Mm. So like, That's good. cause I like for, my journey getting into video. I sacrificed a lot of my social life in my early 20s because I knew starting out getting into freelance work was going to be slow. Yeah. So I worked two other jobs at the same time while doing video stuff part-time until it became something mm-hmm. that could be full-time. Even. Yeah, but I so. think maybe it was easier for you too because it was something that you're passionate about. Yeah. So it's easier to become obsessed over something when you when you really, mm-hmm. you know, it's something that you, you truly want to do. You know yeah. what I mean? That's it's such like, a that's great point mm-hmm. that we do set goals sometimes that we, that we probably don't even want. Like we just think that it's a nice to have, just like sometimes the aesthetic goals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you think that's a really nice to have, but then you realize, hey, these models got this way by i mean they are obsessed about yeah, their diet yeah, the stuff they're that goes very into very it. strict yeah, yeah, about yeah. it which they becomes can. then unhealthy right yeah. to be obsessed over like your your nutrition to be i mean that then you you're, you know what well I'm if saying? it's serving a purpose though let's say that they let's say okay let's just let's play this they are a model 
they're getting paid mm-hmm. uh, to be on the covers of those, uh, you know, of, of magazines and shoots. They're getting paid to sell these programs to people yeah. to look like they. So it's serving a purpose. Now, me, if I'm doing it, I'm not going to be an, an, on any magazine cover. I'm not going to now. Could I be? Could my obsession with that be unhealthy? Why? Why would yeah. it be unhealthy? Like, I guess it's, it's if too, you're if you're doing it to please other people maybe you're doing because you think it's what's expected of you as a, as a side that I'm doing this literally for myself to feel better or well yeah, yeah. it makes me feel good to you know to walk around with six pack abs and look like I'm a model yeah well then what's, but what's the end goal to that too I mean because any like a bodybuilder to will tell ripped. you that when they're in their yeah. best like stage shape they'll tell you like that it's not healthy right you know what I mean like they don't they don't feel great like they feel bad at that point it's not sustainable and so that like mm-hmm. most people <sighs> like they want like you think you want to look like, like have a like where's where's what's the end game there mm-hmm. you know what I mean mm-hmm. because you can just like keep on taking off as much fat and becoming more and more obsessed and it's like killing you you know what I mean it's it's diminishing returns at some point so maybe that line is you know dealing with this obsession thing is like whenever the sacrifice that person's individual sacrifice um, when that becomes more than the when that outshines the goal itself then maybe that is an unhealthy practice because I do feel that like for any challenging goal, you've got to be a little bit obsessed about it. You've got to have, there's a little bit of sacrifice that, I'm sorry, not a little bit, there's got to, there's going to be sacrifice because you do, that is the essence of goals. It's, mm-hmm. it's you got to pick and choose yeah. where, where you spend your time, how you invest your money, what people you're around to help to get you there. Yeah. So you are kind of picking and choosing all along. There is a little bit of a sacrifice and you do have to be, Obsessed, maybe obsessed is a really strong word. Um, maybe really, really disciplined and focused in order to get to where you want to be. Mm-hmm. But it's not necessarily automatically unhealthy Mm-mm. for people to be obsessed about about their goals. I think it's important then, like, just to make sure that they, that you have like points where you're checking in, like, with your life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And just kind of taking a look, no matter how much progress you're making towards your goals, um, how is it affecting? Uh, your relationships, your 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 family, your yeah. friends. Um, how much are you there? And then you know, it's, it's, I think especially more so like with with your family. You yeah. know what I mean? Are you, are you present enough for your family? Yeah. I want to, you know, I don't want to look back years now. Oh, I did all of this so that they got a better life. But then like this this whole <laughs> time in between, it's like you go and talk to them. It's like oh, you know. He just, he wasn't there or something like that. You know what I mean? I just want to make sure that along the way we're having fun. What you're saying is you also need to make sure that those goals line up with your values and what's most important to you. Like they've got to be, because you, there are some things that you can sacrifice. So you've got to put those things like, all right, so here's my pocket of things that I can sacrifice for this goal. Here are the things that I cannot sacrifice. So when this starts to dip over here into this bucket over here, then that's when you're like, okay, this pursuit of this goal is causing my life when not to be unhealthful. Yeah. Because these are the things that I actually don't want to dip. One of the common things I've heard over the years is how my wife or husband does not understand my wellness goals and that it hinders their progress. Now, that is a real and legitimate challenge that I wanna validate, but it can be overcome, just not overnight, and maybe not in the ways that you may be thinking. For instance, for years, I hated the way my parents ate. I tried tirelessly to get them to try new foods and prepare foods in ways that were more nutritious, and every time, we ended up clashing and fighting, so I just backed off. So I was shocked when I suggested my parents go plant-based to address some health issues and they immediately accepted. How and why after all these years would they change? Well, my dad explained it was the family brunches. See, my parents love to eat brunch with the family. It's just much more of a gathering. And I grew tired of going to the same places, so I would suggest other spots and different cuisines. They tried Indian and Mediterranean, Thai and Lebanese, and things they hadn't before. So when the time came for my suggestion, because they had tried so many different foods and loved them, they were less reluctant to try plant-based because they were already eating some of those meals at family brunches. Had no idea. 
So I wasn't even trying to, and I didn't even know it, but I was influencing their decisions to change their eating habits just by going to brunch. So yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. You may have to prep food for your family and then prep food for you in the beginning, but go slow and bring your family in. Perhaps sharing a recipe here and there that you like that you think that they may enjoy too. Don't hit them with the egg white quinoa kale mix bowl on day one. Don't nobody want that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Right for my life. And even in your own diet, try to make some of the foods that you eat daily less calorie dense to promote healthy, sustainable weight loss and muscle building if those goals are important to you. And as it relates to other goals, bring your significant other in for the journey. Let them ride with you in the passenger seat, not you take a trip and then bring back a whole bunch of photos. No, nah, let them travel with you. Just understand yourself and, and what it is, like who it is you, you want to be um, and what it is you want. You know, like there's, there's some arguments people say like, oh, you can't be anything that you want to be. I mean, well, I mean, you, I think you can. I think you can be anything that you want to be the, the the hard thing is knowing exactly what it is that you want, mm -hmm. uh, what it is that you were put here for. Like, what is your what is your true purpose? You know what I mean? And that's true. like, we don't know. Like, that's that's a that's a hard thing to kind of tap into. Um, but once you do uh, get to that get to that space, then yeah, you can you can do anything that you want. That, you, <laughs> that, that is you true, want, though. You know? yeah. I mean, Rachel Dolezal became a whole black woman. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> there's braids on and everything. NAACP president, she can oh. do it all. I will do it all in this white body. She Watch me. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Get the hot and up. <laughs> oh I'm just God. saying yeah, it's, yeah. it's possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Let's yeah. just uh, so a little bit of levity. That's wild. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that's good. Gosh. That's good. No, I, what you said <laughs> before this dumbass. <laughs> no. I do think there's, uh, man, when you do, um, I guess when you do find it, like what's important in life to you, it does kind of help simplify the goal setting process. Like Abby and I will, we'll do a, we won't go anywhere, but we'll do a vacation every year where the kids are out of the house with parents for a few days. Mm. And that's kind of our recalibrate, reset time once a year, go through, make some practical goals for each other as a couple, each other individually, all that kind of stuff. And the more I've done that as I've been married now and have kids and stuff, I realize mm -hmm. that like, oh, if I make it to the end of my life and all I am was a good dad, then... I'm good with that. You know, like that's yeah. like, if I, if, that's if I can be supportive of my kids, support of my wife, like if that's what I'm known for at the end of the day, Man. cool. You know, yeah. like yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. if I'm a good friend, a good employee, like whatever it is, you know, like that stuff's great too. But like my goal is to be a good husband and a good dad. And that really helps simplify yeah, stuff that, because then it's not like, well, I need to be the greatest videographer the world has ever known. Right. Well, I don't know if that's like, yeah. Like I can definitely try my best Yeah. and I want to be the best videographer that I can be, mm -hmm. you know, but like at the end of the day, I want to be the best dad I can yeah, be, yeah. you know, and, put everything and I think, I think when you can figure out whatever that, that achievable, realistic thing that you're passionate about is, whatever it is, you can put that at the top and everything else can start trickling down from there. Well, you how know? to measure that though too, right? You've, yeah. There's got to be a sense of of being able to say, all right, I'm on, I'm on track with this. Because, exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. how would you, how would you know that until... Your kids actually say something to you. Right? Yeah, something. yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And so for us, like honestly, it's just sitting down and saying, like, hey, like these are our protected nights. Like these are our protected days. As far as like, mm. this is when we're all gonna be together as a family. Uh, Abby and I remind each other, like, okay, we need to remember, like, that there needs to be a healthy balance of like us getting onto our kids because we won't, don't want them to <laughs> yeah. to yeah, just yeah. go wild and do whatever they want. But also, hey, us as parents, where have we messed up? As yeah. parents, where yeah. have we been too harsh or yeah. just brushed something off because we were tired, you know, and uh, yeah. it, it changes all the time, man. Mm -hmm. It really does. But what advice would you give to the person right now <clears throat> starting at the top of the year? They've got lofty ideas and goals for the year and they really want to accomplish them. What's your advice for them to do on day one? Uh, day one, I would make sure that you have your goals 
clear like and you know for for most people i think writing them down uh is the best way to make that happen um so when your goals are clear and then man make sure you have like with your lofty goals set them that's great but you got to have some process goals um in between that you can just kind of check in and and be able to reflect on on accomplishments mm-hmm. that you've that you've reached so far um it then you know that goal may come faster than you expected it may take a lot longer but don't cap it at mm-hmm. this year if it's a lofty goal like oh if it doesn't happen then you know it's on to the next thing whatever and i know nah, man just like give yourself a little bit of grace right um and then like focus on just kind of being present like doing better today and then and like how do i get better today Mm-hmm. How do how do I take one step today to get to get to that goal? Um, and it's just like building on that man, and just kind of build momentum, celebrate those those victories as they come, mm-hmm. right. short term victories. And when they have the moment when they just kind of maybe hit the curb and they stumble a little bit, how do they keep going? Try to understand like why why you stumbled, you know, like like okay, what happened? Like what what emotions led up to it that day? Um, what kind of headspace would I, that I was in? Like again, like failure is just a learning tool. So, um, when those moments happen, like learn from it. Otherwise, it's it then it's just a failure gone unchecked, and it's and it's probably gonna happen again. You know what I mean? If you don't start to recognize, like a lot of times, like those things are like they come in patterns, right? Mm. And so it's. A, I'm thinking like on my mind right now is it's just like the addiction process, right? And so it's like understanding like what what feelings like for me like when I start to get overwhelmed is is when I have to kind of check myself and and say something to Christina if she's around or pray. Um, but I understand now, which I didn't before I went to Rio. I was like understanding those feelings that that lead up to it. Um, and so just kind of being in tune with yourself um, is important. I think. Can I ask one last question to both of you? Because mm-hmm. I think this is a really important part. Because we, you both talked about having a community yeah. around you. I think we all, you know, have recognized the importance of that. Sometimes our goals are really personal, mm-hmm. and especially as men, we don't want to be as vulnerable. Mm-hmm. How do you bring your partner into a really vulnerable goal? How, how do you let them in to that? How do you discuss that? <laughs> just kind of stumble through it really <laughs> I feel like there's so many times when it's more it's more personal things like I start out trying to tell tell her and she's just kind of like what what are you talking about what do you mean like explain that further and I'm like dang you don't know okay um and you kind of you know but I, we need it though we do it's just because I think I think it's so scary when stuff's internalized and you yeah. just keep it inside yeah. and you're like, yeah, yeah. oh, it's the worst thing ever. If I tell her this, she's never going to want to be with me again. She's going to yeah. not think I'm the same person, blah, blah, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then when you start talking about it, you know, you realize as men that like it, typically it's an, att- it's an attractive quality to a woman if a man opens up. Right. So yeah. it's, it never ends up being bad. It's just, it's, it's starting. So, and I That's feel like good, it's, Jesse. it's a good parallel to mm-hmm. just the, the goal setting stuff in, in general. Cause it's like, you just kind of got to start. You're going to stumble along the way. Yeah, like you're yeah, going to yeah. do that first workout and you're going to be sore as hell the next day. Yeah. You just got to kind of keep going and stumble and know that, show back yeah, up. Yeah, know that if you have people around you, they're going to be there to yeah. pick you up and tell you. Yep. What to do, real how one. to help you? Yeah, if she yeah. a real, one. yeah, <laughs> no, I that's mean that's true. It, that's the truth, man. And you'll, <laughs> you'll, sign, you'll right? find out. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. so I think for me, it's like, yeah, I, if you can't be vulnerable like with with your significant other, then who else can you be like that vulnerable with? You know, you know what I mean. And so yeah. now, like talking about difficult things, it's like that's that's who I talk to difficult things about. Um, like as far as being being vulnerable, it's like. Yeah, like that's she's created this like safety mm-hmm. uh, zone for for us to be able to just kind of communicate, which you know it's it's a it's a great thing to experience. So I think even if you haven't uh, at this point in your relationship or marriage, man, like spend some time like talking to each other about it. not only that. I think but for our mental health, mm-hmm. one of the best things that you can do, they say, like is is go on a brisk walk and talk about the things that are that are stressing you or weighing on you together the most. Or just together mm-hmm. together yeah 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 together go on a brisk walk and talk about the things that weigh on you the most um is is a healthy practice for anybody but i think i would 
I would start like communicating, like mm-hmm. like open mm-hmm. up, man. Like like you can be vulnerable with with your wife, man. Mm-hmm. Like that's the one place that like, you should be able to, you know. Yes, you should be right. Yeah. yeah. And then, w- what advice w- would you give for that partner who, who is trying to get their significant other to be a lot more vulnerable and a lot more open to share those things, to share your goals of life? Well, patience, one, <laughs> right? Because you know, people like her. Like you said, like a lot of people are guarded, and so it takes like just a certain level of comfort. But then also, uh, be vulnerable yourself, mm-hmm. you know, and just kind of open up the the door that way. And even if they don't step in, and like, okay, well, here's my stuff. It's okay, yeah. but you've already you've set the table yeah. for y'all to come back and have that conversation again. Like if there's anything, you know what I mean. And so, yeah. like with with me, and like even with. Like my son, like I, so like I anticipated like with Jalil, um, cause he's old enough. Like I've talked to him about mm-hmm. my, about my addiction, right? Like about the struggles that I've had in this life and dealing with that and what it's, what it's led to. Um, and I'll, I'll probably have to have it again because he doesn't remember everything. Like, Hey, let me, let's sit down. Let's talk about this. And you know, um, my hopes are that, you know, well, I know that he's going to go through his own struggles, but my hopes are that he understands now that because I'm vulnerable and I share those things as a man, that he can always come to me and talk to me about anything that he's having to go through, mm-hmm. um, no matter how hard it is. Like, if you don't have that in life, say so you don't have a significant other, you don't have a good relationship with your family, man. Yeah. Yo, therapists are dope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Therapists are dope. And just, you know, find one that, that lines up with, with your personality. I mean, you might need to go to a few, but yeah. man. Talk about talking you through some things and just allowing you that safe space to talk about anything. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So talking through in order to get back on track or to stay on track for those goals. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, exactly. it's definitely um, a thing. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. really good. That's really good wisdom, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> OC, what's next for you? You've opened up a gym this year at the end of this year, this fall. Congratulations yeah. with Thank that. You. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what's next for you? Um, what's next right now, man, um, with the gym, it's just like my role or my, yeah, I, I just, I'm, I'm trying to add value. I just want to add value, yeah. uh, for, for our members. Um, and then, you know, I've been, I've been blessed, man, honestly. Um, because, you know, being a gym owner was a goal of mine probably years ago, you mm-hmm. know, it's like, I want to own a gym and it's not. And, and honestly, it's not how how I envisioned it either. It's like I have I have a partner now, and so and then I have another opportunity um, with another gym location, basically that's opening up. A friend of mine who is also a client of mine is uh, is building. Well, he has a he has a business, and he's building a gym in it for me to run and kind of coach his his staff mm. uh, there. And so again, it's like that's it's not what I envisioned when I thought years ago as a gym owner. But it's like, oh my gosh, man, I have these these two gyms now, <laughs> like <laughs> like within within a year. And so um, with both, yeah, just just looking to add as much value to those as possible. Uh, continue to to learn and grow. Um, yeah, I think I think that's 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 where I'm at right now. And the, the best way for me to add value is to honestly just to add value to myself as far as I like, continue and like mm-hmm. to learn and educate myself mm-hmm. on, you know, the science is always changing. Um just just different things, man. I, I listen to different podcasts, I, I read different types of books that just kinda keep me like thinking (laughs) just just keep on challenging and learning and growing man and then being able to give that value to to my clients and and members man uh um i just i love it man yeah that's good thank you for spending time with us today let's go ahead and cheers let's go ahead and toast to goals to good goals yeah good goals good Good goals goals. cheers 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 All right, y'all, that is it for today's episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you gained something from it. Main takeaways. Number one, write down your goals. Make them tissue and real so that you feel them and feel connected to them. Number two, build a community to support you in achieving your goals. Number three, become more resilient when you're experiencing shame or disappointment and change your perspective on regret when things don't go your way. Number four, go slow. 
as I learned in running for a marathon, you gotta go slow to go fast, meaning gradually build up that speed so you'll have enough in the tank for the finish line. And lastly, I know we explored how the steps of overcoming addiction could help with goal setting and goal achievement, but if you find yourself needing help with addiction or even achieving your goals, reach out to a licensed medical professional or therapist for help. Ain't no shame in the game. Catch up on earlier episodes of At The Table at youtube.com slash fitmancook or search At The Table wherever you choose to get your podcast. Get daily meal inspiration at YouTube or Instagram or Facebook. Just search Fit Men Cook. All right, y'all. That's it. Happy goal setting and all the best this year. Peace.